Coming to you live from the Bloatfly Nest, it's Optimal Play, I'm Brandon. And I'm Jordan. And we're back for our first Oathsworn encounter in a while. A very long time. <laughs> uh, I think the last time in... I did kind of trickle them out over the last few months, but the last time we recorded one of these was two hair colors ago. So. Wow. Only yeah. two. Just two. Okay. Yeah. And they last a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Alright. <laughs> and sometimes I even take breaks in between. The last sometimes. time you recorded a story or the last time you recorded a fight? Oh, no. We did a story. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's what yeah. okay. Story chapter five was, was not so long ago. Okay. Right. Then before that, it was like December. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I'm sure we will completely remember all of our rules and tactics and just dominate certainly, this play. Yeah. Certainly, yeah. And we have new cards, and we're playing two full characters each. Yes, we started that. lack of experience. Yes, we started that last time as we upgraded ourselves from having companions. So, I am the Ranger Thera and the Avi Harbinger Squawk. And I'm playing the Ursus Warbear Elsbjorn and the Priest Mediolius. Right. Okay. So between the Harbinger and the Priest, we had a decent amount of healing, I think. We do. And a good amount of ignoring damage, too. Yeah. And yeah. then the bear is kind of a tank, I think. Um, at least her one of her abilities is that she has higher defense values on the bottoms of her cards. Oh, yeah. So, so um, our plan will just be not take damage. Yeah. But unfortunately, in this scenario, we're fighting against this bloat fly, which one of its abilities yes. is to infest right. another... Yeah. The base, the base isn't painted. I'll just hold it like this. Thank there you. we go. Yeah, I didn't Be finish the painting beautifully job. painted by Jordan. I not only did I not finish the painting job on these or the minions, but I also left the civilians at home. So we're using these. Um, uh, they're, you know, they're sci-fi fighters. XCOM, troops. XCOM yeah, from, troops. from XCOM, the board game. Yeah. So, uh, you yeah. know, I apologize for all of that. That's all my fault. But anyways, this bloatfly is going to infest our various civilians. Right. And if they take any damage after that, that civilian is going to burst into a bloatfly uh, larva. Uh, yeah, flying maggots, they're called. Flying maggots. And, so. and when you burst, you're not kidding, because it also does AoE damage to everything around the right. civilian when that happens. Also, right. the civilian does. And we like them alive. We think. <laughs> it's a, so far. It's a scene out of Alien, so we're, right. we're going to see oh, what we can really do. Is, isn't it? Ugh. Yeah. So we have to like both rescue these civilians, but it's even more important that we do it this time, because otherwise they'll turn into more things we have to fight. Uh, true. Right. And then yeah. we also have to you know, stop the, the bloat fly mama from infesting more. Yeah, we were in the past saving them just out of... Um, some combination of our moral duty and hoping that the game would mechanically reward us for it. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. time we know that the game will mechanically punish us if we don't. That's right. That's yeah. right. We have to figure out if maybe like the infesting comes from either her mouth or her tail. Because if we can remove that body part, maybe we can stop that from happening. Yeah, we'll have to pay attention. That's yeah. true. We'll That's see. That's true. We'll yeah, see. and I noticed as we put the dice on here, by the way, that uh, the... I don't remember if it's like this for past bosses, but the, the claw um, body part is like on specifically on the right flank. It's, it's asymmetrical in a way that bothers me. I think they all but, are like that. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's got to go... Yeah. I mean, I guess the only way for it to be symmetrical would be for to have it be like front, uh, core, and rear. Oh, wait, there are also those. There's four total body parts? Yeah. Since when? Hmm. Okay. It might be that, you know, they could have done two claws and then like, I don't know, something about that. Yeah, I don't know. Eh, anyway, it could not be a less minor grape. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I'm just aesthetically a, displeased. Could not be a more minor grape. Correct. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. Could not be a less minor correction. <laughs> right, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was funny. All um, right, let's. Uh, okay, let's yeah. Do it. Yeah, I don't recall the story being all that crucial to, to recap here. We solved a bunch of riddles from some asshole who only spoke in riddles to figure out that the reason people were dying in the town was the bloat fly. Yeah, and I like that guy. Go out after him, right? Did you? <laughs> Just... <laughs> His riddles were nice and easy. They were. We got them all, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah, I think all that's left is for us to dive into the first turn of the game, yeah? Um, Let's do it. We go first, right? We do. I think after we reveal the top card of the encounter deck. Correct. Uh, but before we reveal that, let me remind you to hit the like button on the video and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate it. Um, that's it. Okay. <laughs> the first stage one card is going to be digestive vomit. Ew. It doesn't need to eat you to start digesting you. Interesting. <laughs> uh, it's going to use its parasite emerges keyword and then its infest keyword. So. 
Uh, Parasite emerges, says that each infested character loses a health, and if Parasite's that this way, they explode. A civilian and, dies that way. Did I, what did I say? Parasites. Yeah, if, a, if an infested civilian dies that way, then they explode and spawn a maggot. Um, and then they infest. So infest is where it moves to the nearest uninfested civilian and infests them. Um, it can move any distance while it does that. Okay. So basically, no parasite emerging this turn because nothing's infested yet, but then there will be one. And I would not be surprised if every card starts with that. Yeah. Like, so every or turn it's, a lot it's, of them. it's infesting one and, and exploding the previous one it had infested. Right. And once they're infested, they're, there's no way for us to prevent the maggot from... Yeah, we can oh, kill we can them. Oh, we can kill them. We can kill them, Because yeah. if we save them, if we send them off the board, the maggot still, still emerges. spawns. Yeah. Yeah. So once okay. they're infested, you got to just kill them. And honestly, you probably prefer to do that because they only have one health. Whereas once they become these maggots, they have, you know, six dam uh, six, six defense. Six yeah, defense. still one health per se. But right. yeah, but they have to be hit for six. Right. True, it is a lot easier to just kill them. Um, I'm. What do you think? So in the at the end of previous encounters, it has the epilogue has cared about how many civilians survived. Mm -hmm. This doesn't specify whether the civilian is considered alive or dead when it leaves the board and a maggot appears, <laughs> but do we assume that they are dead Yeah, for that purpose? Like, it seems like that's where the maggots come from, is the, the, the body of, <laughs> yeah, the, I think so. of the person. Okay, so, so they'll be dead for, for that purpose. Right. We're guessing, but I think so. That's how we'll play it, yeah. think, rather than like stop and check BGG or anything. Right. Uh, okay, so anyway, back to the di digestive vomit. Then it's going to target the Oath Sworn with the highest defense, so that sounds like Elspjorn. These both actually have three, oh. so it'll probably oh, okay. tie well, break for the closest. Um, then it's going to move eight to its target. Well, tie break's like uh, north then west, right? Is, That's true. Or is it closest first? To break that, we can double check that if we need to. First, yeah. uh, it's going to move eight to its target. It's going to do a mouth attack. And then uh, the character loses one defense for each health lost. Mark this with a tracker token. This lasts the rest of the encounter. So basically, don't, don't, don't lose health. Don't hit by that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and then it will move four north after all that. Okay. Also, then its um, flying maggots will activate after that's done. Whew. Okay. Well... We can weaken that attack by breaking its face in the first round if we thought that was feasible, but I'm not sure it is. With that, it's our turns, right? Which uh, is just kind of in a, a sequence of our choosing. Yeah, and then as a reminder, we can... How does this work? You can spend one energy to move an adjacent civilian up to four hexes. Yes. So we can, like, get this one off the board and get that one off mm -hmm. the board. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, I mean, I think if we want to, we could probably get five or six civilians off the board this round. We wouldn't accomplish a lot else. But I don't know, like, I'm seeing Thera could probably escort this person off, move up one or two spaces, and then get a ranged attack in, try to take out a maggot, something like that. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at the wrong hands of cards here. Also, she has Quick Shot, which just says the attack must target a minion. Mm. So uh, cool. I should use that early and often on these maggots, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, any first play in mind? Um, just looking through here. I mean, one, two, three, four, five to get up to there. If I wanted to spend one here to get off, that would be six. So that would leave me with three. Um, I think, um... I'm gonna go ahead and let's see. One, two, three, four. I'm looking at some of my things that can attack to ricochet. Yeah. Oh damn, divide the damage equally between all targets. It's still pretty good. Okay, why don't I go You know what? Why don't I do some stuff with Thera? We haven't started yet. That's true. I'm actually going to change my list. Okay, yeah, position. we could just start anywhere on that bottom row. Four, five. So I guess here's one, two, this one here. One, two, three, four. Okay. Before anyone moves, I kind of want to do this thing to help us all out. Oh, sure. And uh, offer a little blessing. Well, should I start near him too then? Should I start it's with my two, Harbinger? It's only two oh, okay. friendly characters within range. Because I'm actually, let's see, my, uh, what is it? Prophetic Fulfillment is the one that uh, I should play early because it lets me choose a person and then the next time I play this card, if they have less health than they had the first time, then I uh, 
then they get healed. Got it. Um, so yeah, I probably want to start the Harbinger here so that it can target probably Mediolius with that. Okay. Um, all right. Well, in any event, uh, I'm going to start with Mediolius playing Blessing. So it's going to cost me two. And it says two friendly characters within range four gain either a redraw, an empower, or a defense token. Uh, I'm going to gain a defense token here. Okay. And then I'll give the other one to Thera. Or, uh, my, or to uh, your Avi, whichever you prefer. Um, probably I'll also take a defense on Thera. Just give her some extra chance of avoiding damage there. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, then similarly, I will just go ahead and with uh, Squawk, I'll play Prescient Strike. That's going to say... Oh, no, not Prescient Strike, sorry. That's a similar prediction mechanic, but the card I was looking for was Prophetic Fulfillment. Um, costs me two Animus. Choose yourself or a friendly character within range three. I will choose Mediolius. Uh, place a die on their player board showing their current health. So I'm going to throw a die there showing a six. Okay. And when I play this card again, if Mediolius has less health than shown on that die, they gain health. And then I choose a new character and repeat. Cool. So, yeah, that's that's definitely an early game play, ideally. Um, and then... Yeah, I mean, I think here's, here's what I'm going to try with Thera. I have just enough to do this, right? Uh, if I'm standing here, characters don't block line of sight, right? I don't think do so. Do they? I think only obstacles do, or maybe or, or small small figures don't. Um, actually, I think that this would not block line of. Oh no, it this would block line of sight to this maggot from here, if if the rules say that it does. Here, why don't you do something, and I'll okay. Back. So I'm going to play this Captain's Plate that says up to two Oathsworn on the board, including yourself, may move one oh. X. So I'm going to let Elspeer move up one. And if you want one of those movements, otherwise I'll move Mediolius. Um, you can go ahead and move Mediolius. Okay, one there. Then I'm going to move one more to here. Then I'm going to spend one to move this guy back. One, two, three, four. So he's nice. safe. Um, should I keep going? Um, I'm just, let's see... Enemies and friendly characters do not block line of sight. That's what I was checking. So okay, so I think what I'm going to do with Thera is spend an animus to escort this civilian out. Two saved. Spend two animus to move two spaces up to here, where I'm still next to a tree, and then I am going to use the rest of my animus on Ricochet. This is a well because I'm using my bow. It's a ranged attack. Uh, and this may target an additional enemy within range four of the first target. So unless you think we are going straight for the boss, I'm leaning towards... Well, hmm. So what's going to happen is uh, with two targets, I'm going to add four damage to this attack. And then I'm attacking once and dividing the damage between the targets. So I'm trying to decide whether I could get 12 and take out two maggots. And if I can't, then I should actually do, just do a maggot and the boss. I'm thinking of trying to take out these two maggots and hit the boss's front from here. Okay. So if you wanted to do this maggot on the boss, that would be kind of cool. That's out of I'm range not... for me, but oh, okay. I could do this maggot and that maggot. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and apply the damage to this one. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Okay. So I'm going to target these two maggots. Okay. And if I only have enough to kill one, I'll kill the far one. Sure, sure, sure. So I'm adding four damage to this attack, and then would you grab me two yellow cards for my bow, and... Let's see. I have a decent handful of redraws. Um, let me... Give me three whites. Mm -hmm. Is that going to get me to 12? That's what I'd like to... But I'm adding four to it, so I just need eight from the cards. Okay, I think I like this. Let's give this a shot. One, two, three, <laughs> all right. <laughs> four, five, six. Well, damn, I could redraw trying to get higher, but also I could just take out the, that far maggot and call it a day. That's probably fine. You said you have... Uh, I mean, I'm going to try for it. You're going to try uh, Try to? Yeah. You're not dividing the damage between them? Are you yeah. applying it to all? So you're, you're likely to take them out. Okay, I think I'll just be happy with that, killing this maggot. And, uh, and that's, that's that. All right, so let's see what I can do with this 
war bear here. So we're gonna move another three. One, two, three to here. Hell yeah. One, two, three. And then we're gonna spend four to play swipe. And so this goes in the one slot. Oh, that's just in the one? That's nice. Yeah. So it's an area of effect that it targets my three front hexes. It adds one damage for each enemy hit. So I'm already at three. And then I attack once and apply to all targets. So I get a single black card. I'm going to use my whetstone to gain two yellow dice. Love it. And then... That's not actually... Oh, wait. Which way is this facing? It's facing me. It's facing you? Okay. Yeah. I was like, it was kind of straddling the line the way I had set it back down, and so I wasn't sure. But okay, yeah. So that is hitting its face. Right. Um, and then, I don't know what, how many more dice I need here. I'm, I'm really just trying to do at least six so that I kill the two maggots. Um... It's, did you, sorry, did you get it, use it in a power token? Or how did you no, get the yellows? I used my whetstone to gain Oh, two cool, cool. I missed dice. that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's, so, that's great. Yeah, so I've got that. And then I could use an empower to get another black or, you know, some more yellows. But I feel like my odds of six are okay here. I'm going to take one white just for okay. safety. And we're going we're gonna to go. I like it. You're sitting on four redraw tokens, too. So. Yeah. So oh, start. crit. Yep. Might as well go. Oof. So I'm definitely going to hit six as long as I don't mess up. So yeah. I will use a redraw token here okay. on the yellow. Mm -hmm. That'll do. And then I'll crit on the yellow. Yep. That's a bummer. But that's still seven. Yeah, that's fine. I think getting a blank out of the deck is not the biggest bummer. Right. And so with that, I kill both of the blue. Oh, and I actually have plus three. You do? I do. Oh, because it's for one for each target. Plus one right. for each target. So, so it's nine total, seven, no, sorry, ten total, because I had seven. Okay. Well, so that takes out both maggots, and the defense of the bloatfly is four, so you'll do two damage to it. Nice. That seems really solid. And the maggots are cleared for now, so that feels good. Yeah. Okay. Well done. Thanks. It was expensive. Yeah. But, um, you know, that's what it is. So I'm... Let's see... I'm potentially, um, hmm. I'm not probably doing all that much with the Harbinger. I want to clear a civilian, and if I end up within, <coughs> if I end up within four range of you, because it looks like it's clear that the bear is getting attacked, right? Yeah. Uh, then I can help defend it. So maybe I just go one, two, three, four. Spend one Animus to send the civilian out. Okay. So we've rescued three. And th then this Animus can stay here because I have nine regen, so that's like not even... Um, yeah, did you need to be within yeah. four of the bear, though? Because you're currently within five. Oh, thank you. Um, I do need to be within four. Yeah, against you or a friendly character within range four. Uh, okay, I guess I better sidle up one more. Okay. I've got to remember, too, my uh, preternatural swiftness. Once per encounter, the Harbinger can move any distance for free without moving through the intervening hexes. Um. Okay, I think I'm not getting a lot done either. Oh. No, you know, I'm going to save that Animus. Okay. I have an item in my hand that lets me extend the range when I use an ability. So, I think I'll, I'll just have that be the plan if I, if I end up playing that ability. Okay, sure. Um, I'm already realizing that I've made a number of mistakes. <laughs> okay. Us make mistakes in Oathsworn? Never. So I guess what I'm wondering is, should Medeolius just go around trying to clear these guys? I guess I can. So what I'll do is I will play um, Righteous Advance, which goes into my one slot, which battle flows. And this says pay any amount of Animus and move two for each Animus paid. So I'm going to pay two Animus to move four. Mm. Like oh, that. wow. Okay. And then I'll spend one to move this guy. One, two, three, four. So he's off. Yep. And then I'll spend one to move this guy. He can't quite get off. But all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move him this way. One, two, three, four. Oh, so okay. So now I can go over there. Oh, yeah. That works. Um, I was going to also say you could put him like here where then I could push him the rest of the way. 
if we wanted to. Do you have one that you want to do? Are you going to do uh, it right now? I could, yeah, we could do it now, or like that's probably not going to be bothered until the next you know round. I'm so gonna, either way, I'm going to save you with your animus because okay. right now the priest is like not really helping with the fight. Sure, yeah, and you sort of are moving towards the fight. Yeah, so. good point. Okay, um, so we'll do that. I like and it. I only have six regen, so I'll leave this two in here with the intention of moving that back. Solid. Okay, uh, I think my turns are done. Me too. All right, then Bloatfly is up. So, Digestive Vomit. Parasite emerges, so uh, if there was an infested, or all infested characters lose one. Yeah, so that is written in a way that we can get infested and start losing health every turn. So well, something to watch out for. <laughs> yeah, we, we already knew that, right? Because it says if there are no civilians to infest. Oh, is that what it actually says? Kind oh. of dangerous, because if we remove all yeah, the civilians, Yeah, maybe we need to leave start so. infesting us. Yeah, maybe actually we've pushed those out so that we have half of them saved and let the other half tank it, essentially. Maybe. Yeah. Well, let's see how this we'll round see. goes and what yeah, the next yeah. card says. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, targeting the, the Oathsworn with the highest um, with the highest defense, it's going to move eight. It doesn't need to move at all. And then it's attacking you well, with its front. Well, first it's going to fast, right? So oh, thank you. It's going to yeah. move... This is oh, the nearest oh, unfasted right. civilian. Oh, yeah. So it's just going to turn towards that, essentially. Right. Uh, and it infests them, and we just mark that with any cube. Sure. And, okay, yeah. And then, then it's going to proceed. It's going to move eight to its target, which is you. Attack you with its front. Right. And uh, you lose a defense permanently for each health lost here. But, and before you draw for it, here's the card that I have. Uh, Siphon Spirit. Before an enemy draws damage against you or a friendly character within range four, and I have my walking stick can extend to the range here, so okay. I can do it. Um, guess the amount of health the victim is about to lose. If after mitigation you're correct, one character within range gains one. Oh shoot, I thought that that prevented one. No. Damn it. It's uh, okay. So it's not quite... Most of the time, it would be the same as preventing one. Here it's not the same. Right. Hmm. Okay. I do have a good effect here, so... What's interesting... But this one says after, so I can wait. I can draw. Um... Do, do, you, do you think you can mitigate it all? Yes, I have this one which says, after an adjacent enemy draws damage, ignore one of their might cards of your choice. Okay, that's solid. And then you can also play a defense card. And and I, you have a defense do I have token. to play the defense card first before I we draw? I believe so. So I'm going to go up plus four. Okay. The defense tokens you can do after, right? Yes. Okay, so this one's going to go four. And when you play for defense... Up four, jeez. You okay. still battle flow, right? Yes. So the, that's good. That's kind of why I did that. I was like, oh, I'm going to play this, so I might as well get some stuff in there and start moving right, closer right. back. So I'm at seven, and then we're going to draw it, which is going to be a black and four. Yeah, minutes. so I'm still going to, because I also want to um, battle flow what I have in the three slot. I'm still going to play Siphon Spirit, and I'm going to guess that you are going to lose zero. And if I'm right, you, I can heal you one. Oh, cool. Right? Like that. Yeah, so, oh, so I do need to drop down my uh, walking stick in my one, mm -hmm. which says when you use an ability with a range keyword, add two range to the ability. So that's how I'm extending the range to six. Okay, cool. All right, so here we go. I'm at seven defense. It has drawn three, uh -oh. six, nine, twelve. Whew. So I can ignore a three, which brings it down to nine. Yeah. And then I can spend this token, which goes up to eight. But that's oh, no. the most I can do. Yeah, I don't think that I... Uh, let me double check Thera's stuff, because I know she has some ability to... Oh! Uh... Shit... Is it not quite in bow range? No, I can ignore one of its might cards if it was in my bow range, but that's four. Damn. Seems Damn. like you take a hit. Yeah, bummer. Okay. That's so, bummer. Yeah. but I'm at eight, so I'm only going to take one hit. Am I doing the math right? I can ignore yep. this. That's nine. Yeah. I can go up one. That's eight. But I would need to get to ten, right? Yeah, so no reason to spend the defense token. Right, exactly. So I'll take one damage. Ouch. I don't get your healing because you guessed zero. Yeah. And I lose one defense for yep. the scenario, which is pretty bad. Oh, so that's really tokens. bad. Mm hmm. Who oh boy, I was really trying to avoid that. Yeah, yeah, that, that's rough. Okay. <clears throat> um, right. Then it's going to move uh, four north, but it bounce, basically bounces off and moves south, right? Yeah, so it goes, yeah, one, two, three. Four? Did I do that right? I think yeah. I think it's here. One, yeah, it was here, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, I think that's right. 
Um, one, two. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Okay, okay. So it doesn't displace you, right? Because it doesn't move. Right. It doesn't put. It doesn't move through you all here. Like bosses always jump, right? right. Or in this case, fly. I fly, guess. right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Or we've had one that burrows. They just. They never walk. Right. <laughs> We've well, established you that. all your zeros, right? Uh, yeah. And that's it. Uh, we would activate minions, but we killed them all. Amazing. So yeah, I think we just uh, reveal next turns encounter card. Oh yeah, gotta do that. Yeah. It is sting. Poison drips from a stinger longer than you. Uh, from a stinger longer than you are. Could it still poison you if it went all the way through? Uh, Parasite emerges and infests. So now this is the one that we need to worry about a parasite emerging from. Right. Then it's going to move eight to its target to do a tail attack. And if the target loses any health, they lose an additional health. And then it's going to move four southeast. So it's going to end up in that corner, roughly. Okay. okay. So I probably want to have somebody go kill that guy. Yeah. Uh, you seem... I am closest. Best but positions you, too. You also might be able to with range with Thera. True. And then I can smack its back. It's up yeah. to you. So let's uh, regen Animus. You get all of yours back? Uh, yeah, a seven, seven regen. Yeah, both of my characters have a little more regen than you. All right. Hmm. Let's see. I. Could we break its tail? You're there. Is yes. it an option to ignore that infest and like I could move Thera a few spaces so she can attack from behind also and we break its tail? Because then its its attack will be lessened and you know we'll be one fifth of the way towards winning. Why don't you let me see if I can break its tail or like see if I can do a bunch of damage to its tail? Okay. And then if I can, you can stick with it. Does that make sense? Yeah, that works for me. All right. I have this card called Primal Rage. Let's do two attacks, and it says only one can contribute can trigger the determination rule. I'm just wondering if I can use the same. I can attack the same thing twice. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. I don't see why not. Because that seems pretty good. Um, so let's oh, go man. for it. Okay. I will put this in the two slot. So it's going to battle flow these and spend four for it, and I'm going to deal two attacks. First attack is going to have a black, and I'm going to spend an empower token to get, um, let's get a red and a yellow. And then I'll draw a white, and that'll be it. Okay. Okay. Oh, man. God, I keep drawing these threes. So that's eight. So that's enough to do two damage. Yep. Um, so two damage. Okay. To the tail. Uh, I have right. one more attack. Okay. And okay. I'll spend an empower token again, and we'll go for it. Three, three, two into crit. That. I'm okay. going to redraw the black. Sure. Oh. <laughs> I can do it again, right? Yeah. Because I feel like these black cards have to be pretty valuable. Got it. It's another three. Okay. So that's 11 uh, plus my white crit. Actually, before I draw my white crit, I'm going to play a card, mm -hmm. which is this one. It says, when you critical during an attack that hits, draw two additional cards instead of one. That's your great axe. Nice. It is. And it goes in my one slot, so it's going to come back to me relatively soon. So I'll draw two of these. Does that crit again? Uh, I think crits keep critting, yeah. So there's that, and then there's that, and that crits Whoa. again. Okay. Okay. So How much does this add up to? Uh, 9, 11, 13, 15, 16, 18. Uh, that'll break its tail. There you go. Well done. Okay. <laughs> Very that's nice. Gonna resolve that and card that's going to resolve this card right now. Yeah. Uh, I think it's worth it, though. All right. Well, um, I'm a little sad that it's moving because I had, had just been doing the math on like a pretty epic attack that Thera could do right here. I'm sorry. Uh, it's fine. I'll find an opportunity to do it. Um, it was not going to hit the tail, but it was potentially going to hit all three dice down the center. Oh, of it. that would've been cool. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So maybe I should have done that first. But I was waiting to see whether you could break the tail, and if not, then maybe I was going to change. And anyway, anyway, uh, long story short, it's gonna sting. Um, it's oh, so yeah, parasite emerges right now. So this explodes, dealing damage around it. We don't have to draw that damage, I don't think, because it's not relevant. Right. I'll throw that over with the maggots. 
and spawn a maggot where it was. And then it's going to want to fast this guy right here. Yeah. Okay, maybe that one's worth killing. Uh, then it's going to move eight to its target. Uh, its target in this case is going to just be its closest, right? What's the basic target rules? T closest and then north, then west. So it's going to pick the bear again. Okay, so it'll just turn around. Oh boy, okay. My poor bear. Yeah, well on the bright side, we broke the tail, which means it ignores its highest, it's, wor it's, it's worst for die. us, it's best die. Right. Yeah, so it's just gonna draw four reds, just four reds. So I'm gonna put this two into here to go up to five defense, and then it's gonna draw four reds. One, two, three, four. Um, okay, four defense, and it has drawn six damage. Ooh, well, why don't I go ahead and play Disarming Shot with uh, Thera? This is what I was intending to play last time and couldn't. After a, uh, oh shit, non-adjacent enemy within bow range. Nope. That's okay. Still I can, doesn't work. Okay. After an adjacent enemy draws damage, ignore one of the mic cards. Beautiful. Okay. So we'll do that, and that ignores the three, and so three is under where we are. Which means that... Let's get this. I want to move this so it's yeah, a little less cluttered. Um, so I'll take no damage. Well done. Okay. <clears throat> and now move four southeast. Now move four southeast. So... Uh, one, two, three, and then it moves back this way, right? Four. Hmm. Damn. All right. Okay. Uh, we still get to see its new card, its upcoming card, right? We do. That is screeching wings. The fly's wings oscillate, rubbing together a terif rubbing together a terrify ear-splitting noise pierces the air. Parasite emerges, then infest. This damages all oathsworn and allies on the board. For each target, draw a white for each hex between them and the next closest target to them. Draw separately for each target. For each card showing a two, the target must either lose two combat tokens or lose a health. Of their choice. Um, what? Okay, so, so it's going to target all four of us. Plus allies, does that include civilians? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. I think it would say all characters on the board if it wanted so to attack. So for each target, draw but... one white for each hex between them. So we just want to be... So together. we want to be clumped. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's okay. going to move northeast. So it's going to go that way. And, mm -hmm. bounce. and bounce off. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Interesting. But, uh, sp but remember... Um, it's not doing damage either in the normal way. It's for each card showing a two, you either have to spend two tokens or lose a health. Yeah. So the, yeah, the fewer, and we 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 don't have to clump up, right? We just have to like, or like we have four characters, we could pair them up. That's true. So we just kind of need Mediolius and the Harbinger to mm -hmm. uh, and Squawk to be paired up, and then these two to be paired up. Right. Okay. I mean that seems reasonable. For each hex between them. Which actually means if we're next to each other, this doesn't hit us at all? Right. I think so. Seems reasonable. Okay. Um, I wish now that I had a good shot down the... To be uh, fair, this guy isn't facing that way. He just moved southeast, so she should be facing this way. Oh. Mm, Does okay. that change your uh, situation? If I attack the tail, I can just apply that to any adjacent die to it, right? Right. So, no, that's, sh that's fine. It doesn't really matter much. Okay. Um, what does matter is that I have to move. I was going to use an item that it gives me um, empowered three if I attack without moving. Yeah. But... I wonder if you want to just kill this guy, too, instead of whatever true. else. True. Or maybe the Avi wants to do that. I'm not sure. Let's see. Um, I'm going to... <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, yeah, I wish that that was... Shot up to three enemies in your front arc. So if I turned like this, they're not. That's not quite in my. I don't think I can get them both in my front arc. I think it is because your front arc is these. Is it? It's not. Is it, it's, it's no. It's, hex, it's one hex out hexes? and then branching out from oh, there. I see. Yeah. Okay. Bummer, bummer. Yeah, because the two side hexes I think are each one of your left arc and your right arc are those two, mm -hmm. and so it's it's similar to the way that a boss is is oriented. With two sides being its flank. What's the range on that? Because technically, I think this and this and this are all in the same arc. Uh, the range would be my bow range, so four. Okay. Yeah. Um, or, yeah, I still think I just want to. You have you're have you spent pretty much all the bear's animus? The bear, yeah. yeah. I mean, the bear can move a little bit. I have 
I was thinking of trying to play a one just so I'll get all these cards back next turn. Mm. Um, um, let's see. Well, I could quill throw. Okay. I don't know. It's... Mm. Mediolius is stranded if I move the Harbinger this way, too. What do you think? Do you want to all... Like, we're doing damage to the boss pretty quickly. Yeah. Should we actually, like, kind of turn and try to just Hello. blow it up really fast? Because I'm theoretically... Could do a lot, a lot of damage to it here. Um, yeah, maybe. I'm down. I'm down. Uh, why am I blanking on what's this? Oh, that's battle flow token. Battle flow. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I wish I could do this without moving, but I can't quite. Okay, but I still want to do it. It's also it's my shiny new card. So who doesn't want to play a piercing arrow when it's mm. your new level five card? Uh, okay, so I will go. Uh, two spaces of movement. Okay. And then I'll pay five for Piercing Arrow. So this is one of my new level five cards. Uh, it's an attack. It targets all hexes in a straight line between you and your maximum bow range. So that's hit targeting three hexes of the boss. Attack once and apply a damage to the first occupied hex. Ignore your highest might card for each additional occupied hex uh, going down the line. Large enemies can take damage more than once if they occupy multiple targeted hexes, as it specifies on here. So cool. uh, then I'm going to... I have that empower token, so I am definitely. Um, you know, if you want to, before you play mm -hmm. that, I can give you another empower token. Oh sure, okay. yeah. Let's make this as big as possible. All right, so I'm gonna because yeah, it seems like a good attack to make big. So I'm gonna spend this for two animus, and then I'm gonna spend three animus to play this one, which is a feral roar. And actually, before you That's move, that's good for your battle here too. Uh, was. So I'm actually gonna move. Here's what I'm gonna do. Go back. I'm going to try and help you. Well, uh, I'm going to move one here. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And then I'm so, going to play this. So you're within three. Mm -hmm. And so you can either gain an empower token or you can move two. Oh. So I can give you the move. So it would, you want it would move. save me that animus. But for the ability I wanted to use, I don't think that for my fire water that says if you have not moved yet this turn, gain empowered, I don't think that that would work. Okay, all right. So you can um, just gain the empower. I think I'll take the empower, yeah. Okay. So I will take that even though I'm probably about to spend it. And then I can move two. And. I don't know. So I want to move to here, and then yeah. we kind of we want to be next to each other, right? So I'll so just stay there. So what yeah. I'll do is I'll not have spent that other thing to move, which works out the same. Okay. Way. Yeah. And uh, then at the end of that card, I get to move to. So it's fine. Oh, oh, so got, I, it. got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. I just have one more animus. Okay. Okay. So then, yeah, I will make that <coughs> the move I'd already described. I'm attacking in a straight line at the bloatfly's butt. I'm going to use both of my empower tokens. Mm -hmm. So. Why don't I? I'm drawing two yellows. Mm -hmm. Let's. Uh, that's, this is empowered six. So I could go four reds, right? That's yeah. One uh, one empowered to make a yellow or red. Another and then two twice. So four reds. What's in the black deck? Does the black deck have? Because the thing is, in our black deck, we've drawn a bunch of threes and nothing better, and there are five crits. Mm. There's a lot of blanks too, but I do. I'm doing this knowing that I have plenty of redraw tokens. Also. We've also drawn two so. two blanks and three mm. threes, so our black deck has very good odds right now. Okay, for what that's worth. Did you want to shuffle it after? <laughs> did you, or did you just fan it? No, out? I fanned out this one. Oh, oh, yeah, I will shuffle this one. Um, I was just trying gotcha. to. Oh, you were just trying to remember what's in it. Is. Okay, okay. Uh, so I could basically. Take one less red and take three blacks. That's actually not the worst idea. I like that. Um, but I, since I have all these redraws, like maybe I'll also add a couple whites because I do. I'm gonna have to. I, I want, would like to like do at least one damage to its face after ignoring my best two cards, right? So yeah, I think I'm gonna take two whites then. Okay. I'm sitting on four redraws, so I shouldn't miss. Famous last words. Uh, I also have, remind me I have a card to play if I crit. It's not the biggest deal, but. Okay. Okay. All right. Shooting its butt. Four. Four. Blank. Four up to eight. Blank. And two. Has me at ten. Well, let me uh, redraw the black, please. Let's get a black crit. That's what we're talking about. Okay. Um, I don't. So this is currently at 9, 13, 15. Currently now, 
even the third one hit would get six, and we still have a crit to draw. So I don't think I'll redraw that. I think just draw me the crit black, please. Well, <laughs> that's fine. Um, okay, so this is going to do nine, uh, 13, 15. Ooh, now I do wish I was one higher. But you, do you have to redraw before drawing no, the crits? Oh, no. so I could still redraw... I think you can even redraw this crit. Can I? I don't know. The, mm -hmm. the blank that I drew on the crit? Should we double check? Should I double check? Yeah. You know what? I'll hit the pause button. We'll do a classic rules break. Be right Sounds back. good. Okay. Okay, it works. So I'm going to use another redraw. Give me a new black card. Let's do it again. Oh, come on. All right, this is my last redraw. I mean, I guess, I guess I'll keep doing it. I just want this to be a... There we go. That's another crit. Now we're talking. All right, give me another crit. Why not? Why not? Eh, three. Okay, so to the tail. It's going to do uh, seven, 12, 17, uh, 21, 23. So it's... That's just one shy of Again, six. one shy. But you know, it's, it's commonly going to be one shy of something. I'm going to uh, relax. Okay, so uh, because I'm shooting up the middle, I don't know that I want to break a die here when we haven't... Uh, kind of paired everyone up for this card. So I'm just going to apply that to a flank. Let's put it on the right flank because that's the one with the body part. So five damage to the tail goes through to the flank. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to ignore a five, a five and deal so seven, 20, 12, uh, 16, 18. 18. So four damage to the core. Mm -hmm. And then, wow, why can I not find the two on this die? Holy cow, okay. And then we'll ignore one more five, and so a 13. 13 is going to be three damage to the front. That is pretty perfect for not wanting to break any dice. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> uh, that is probably the most damage I've ever done in one attack. Yeah. Uh, thank you, new level five card, I guess. There you go. And, and four many redraw tokens. tokens. <laughs> uh, and an empowered token, and you used an ability to help. So, right. you know, it was not at it was not, not without cost. Yeah. Right, but you know. Uh, also, I had said here, while you while you dispose of those, I had mentioned that I had one card I wanted to play. My Gnarled Tom, my bow, just says, when you critical during an attack that hits, uh, gain two animus. That's so I will. pretty good. Yeah. You know what I'm realizing is, I for some reason thought there were only three blanks, but there are six blanks in this deck, right? Um... In yes. Each of these decks, yes, there are. Blanks. I was yeah. like, oh, there's only three. We've already drawn two. No, no, because it's, <laughs> like, it's two pieces of the D6. And then we kept drawing yeah. blanks. I was like, what is happening here? <laughs> okay. Okay. Now that I have that two animus also. Okay. So let's see. This goes here. Battle flowing this down. Okay. I have two animus, which... Mm, I can... Well, no, there's no reason to save it on Thera. But... Now I wish you weren't adjacent to me, because I could gain one more. I guess the, the civilians are not considered minions, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, where does it talk about attacking infested? Let's it says see. here you may here we kill go. civilians. You may kill civilians. They don't even have to be infested. Uh, that's true, which will stop them from dying from the parasite. Because yeah. uh, we do want to... Kill that, right? Especially yeah, yeah, yeah. standing adjacent to two of us. Yeah, I, I have like a quick shot, which is a, a one animus attack that must target a minion, but I guess that's not a minion, so yeah. I can't quick shot it. Can Avi do it? Frustratingly. Uh, certainly, the difficulty is just efficiently doing that and pairing up with Mediolius. Uh, Mediolius can run over there. Okay. I mean, then. Target energy, um, Let's see. Oh, I also could just knock it back. Uh, that's funny. So I could. I also have a way to just knock it away from us. Um, well, why don't? Hmm. I could. If you want to move, if you can get Mediolius over to us, like close enough that it's not a big um, problem for the screeching, then I could move the Avi here and target both of these. So the Avi needs to go here? Yes, because it's just One, a ranged two, three, two four, attack. Five, six. Um, can the Avi go first and kill this? Yes. One, two, three, four. Oh, but six. but it's going to simultaneously attack the fly, and I'm envisioning it breaking a die if it hits at this point. 
That's why I, I wanted. See. That's why I wanted to move. That's fine. Mediolia. First. So and sorry, where does the Avi need to go? Avi should go be, here? Needs to be here. here. Two spaces from both the civilian yeah. and the bug, and then also if I'm breaking the die, I want to be standing next to Thera, right? Six. And I'll have to spend one more for seven. Well, that's fine. I'll just move. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. <laughs> that's six animus. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay, and then the uh, harbinger. Let me see if I have a more efficient way of doing that. I One, two, three, four. Yeah, okay. Spend four, <coughs> and I will spend five on quill throw. Uh, quill throw says attack at range two, target up to three different enemies. Attack once and apply to all targets. Before the attack, I can predict how much damage I'll draw, and with if I'm within two of the correct answer. This costs one less animus, so I'll like refund one. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I am targeting its right flank. Is Probably what's within two, first, right? right. Um, or is it all simultaneous? Oh, you know what? Oh, if it changes anything, I don't have to break a die, right? Because this is its tail. It's, sometimes it's a little hard to tell in these minis, but yeah, its tail is here. I can attack its rear and apply it to this flank so I don't have to break a die. If you want to change what medi if you want to back yes. it up and, and deal move, with medial layer. Move one less. Okay. There you go. Okay, so then I'm going to target the civilian and the rear of the fly. Okay. I am going to predict let's see, I'm gonna do like probably he's got redraw tokens. But I'm not gonna like super empower this, I don't think. So I'm just gonna predict that I will draw six Let's draw, well, uh, let's see. To, to, to kill a civilian, we only have to hit it, so I just want to not miss. Right. So, you know what, let me just say, I'm gonna predict four. Okay. You're and that way, one. if I draw a two, I can, oh wait, no, this is not adding to it. I'm getting it confused with another card. All of my predictions that all do different things yeah. are all mixing together in my head. Okay. okay, this one just refunds Animus. So I'm gonna say four then, as my guess. You're and I'm gonna draw one. two yellow, I mean, we've got redraw tokens, so give me a white also. We'll just do this. Okay. Blank, blank, and a crit three. Well, why don't you give me a card for the crit? It's another one, wow. We're up to eight. Oh, so yeah, I'll redraw yellow. Okay, I uh, did not succeed at my prediction, <laughs> but I did kill a civilian, sorry yeah. civilian. And I did 10, so two hit points to the rear. I'll direct that. If we're not going to break the die here, then I'll direct it to the other flank. Right. Okay. Okay, so Mediolius is gonna move one to here, and then is gonna play, um, oops, lay on hands for one, which goes here. And this says, select an adjacent friendly character and perform a basic check with one free redraw. The difficulty of this check is equal to the character's health plus two, and for each success they gain one. Hmm. So the difficulty is six. I'm gonna play my iron ring mail, which says during the encounter, if there's an adjacent oath sworn, gain two yellow for an attack or a basic check. So my basic check has two yellow, and then I'm gonna give it two white, and I have one free redraw. One, four. Blank, blank. So Oof. free redraw. I need okay. one more though to be successful. So I will spend a redraw. There we go. So nice. that's gonna heal one here. And because I healed one, I lose one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which is fine, because that means that this die is doing something. Yep. And I'm, I'll, I'll be getting that back soonish. And uh, I will also advertise that I do have a card that can give a character three defense against damage as long as it's drawn within range three of me. So, mm. um, and I have another one that can ignore an enemy might card for an adjacent character. So if you're next wow. to me, okay. you're going to deal, like, I can really shield well, you. Well, we up. shouldn't be taking much damage other than, like, from that maggot <sighs> this turn. Oh, right, because we didn't break a die. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will just kind of, before we end the round, I'll go ahead and... Uh, Amber Stones, it's my gear. It says if there's no enemies adjacent, battle flow one card once. So I'm gonna get my prophetic fill fillment to my zero slot with that. Nice. And 
that's I'm just looking at my battle flow situation to decide if I want to spend any tokens or anything. Tokens go away at the end of the encounter, right? Yeah. So I, no I almost might as well just to keep my uh well, I mm. Yeah, another sure. way to look want... at it is it's gonna draw at least five more cards against us, right? Right. Uh yeah, you know what? Here that piercing arrow was so fucking good. <laughs> uh, well, mm, I don't have <coughs> it was good because of all the tokens I spent on it. So never mind, I am just going to battle flow this ricochet so I can pick it back up because that's okay. pretty solid. Uh okay, then I will go ahead and pick up my zeros, I guess. Yeah, LSP one's picking up six cards. Wow. Feels pretty good. I can imagine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ready for a screech? Parasite emerges, then infest. But we killed the one the parasite would emerge from. And then it's going to move to the nearest uninfested civilian, which is just this one, right? So, infested. Mm -hmm. And then this uh, card, I don't even know if it's called an attack here, but it damages all Oathsworn and allies on the board, but we're only drawing cards for each hex between us and the next closest target to them. So... No cards. No cards between us, or no, none between us, right? right? As long as that's like not including the one. I almost feel like it should be including that one, but for this card to be all that scary. But do you want to draw one each? Okay. Not particularly. Right. Not if that's what the card says. Yeah. Uh, and then it's going to move four northeast, which would be one, and then bounce back the other way. So two, three. Oh, doesn't it ricochet off and go Oof. this way? Does it? That would kind of make sense because that way it's still moving north. Think so. Another thing to check. All right, I'm gonna hit pause button. We'll check. Well, let's just let's just get these rules relearned sure, and, then, sure, sure. and then play in less than eight months, and we'll then we'll be masters. Okay, yeah. sounds good. To All me. right, All right. Here, here we go. So yes, it is reflecting. The rules say as if bouncing off of a mirror. So, or as if being reflected by a mirror. So it moved one to get here, two, three, four. This is the center of where it's landing. I feel like it should be one hex further north. Really? Yeah, let me try. So it started here, right? Yeah. So it's going to go one mm -hmm. to here. Then it bounces like this, right? Two. I don't... Three, four? Basically, what you moved its center to here, and I don't see any reason that its center could be there at any point. Its center was here, so I'm just moving its center. One, two, three, four. No? I see you're counting from the center. I'm like... Um, that's kind of how I always move it, as I think about where was the center. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's fine. Yeah. I think. Should we check the rules just to make sure we're getting it right? I mean... I'm just messing around. <laughs> <laughs> um, whoa. Okay. So it's landing here. That displaces you. Does that do damage when that happens? I don't think so. I don't think it did either. Um, so I guess where would you like to be displaced to? Well, I have to be here, right? Oh. Because it's north and west, is that how that works? Oh, that sounds right, yeah. Okay. That wasn't so scary. Um, so, it's unlikely to do another stage one card, because remember, when, we, uh, when, it, we've bro when we've broken two dice, it accelerates to stage two, but yeah. if it were to stay in stage one, it would sting again, which okay. is an additional health if you take damage from it. Right. Uh, oh, and the minion's going to move, so right. it moves unlimited range to its target, which is going to be you. Great. Yep. Uh, and then it's attacking you for black and yellow. Okay. Yeah. Black and yellow. Black and yellow, black oh, and don't, yellow. Don't use our cards. No, never. So what do we want to do about this? My defense is only two. Yeah, that's a that's not great. Um, I do have that disarming shot that uh, nope it has to be no yeah that's a non adjacent enemy. Okay, um, so I could ignore my choice if it's my cards. Okay, so then I'm just gonna draw. Okay. Uh, uh, four. Oh wow! I okay. I'll play a disarming shot, and I think I'll ignore the three. Amazing. Yeah. And so I won't take any damage. I probably should have played a card for defense there, but I'm glad that worked out. That worked out great. Yeah. yeah. It would have. Clearly, if you had played a card for defense, it would have been a misfly. <laughs> right, 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 clearly. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, I mean, is this the round where we win? We just hopefully don't die to the onslaught of cards that would result? Because it only has a combined eight health left. Yeah. And actually, I'm in a position right now where I can hit this bloatfly, its front hex, and then its side hex. That seems really good. So I'm going to do that. 
right now. And it's it's left side. Okay, so that's probably not breaking two dice at once. But it will it will break at least um, one. I yeah. Think. So that's gonna cost me. Oh wait, first I gotta get my six animus back and then spend four of it. So it's gonna cost me four animus. Well, let's see if I can improve it in any way. Sure can. I can gain two yellow dice on the attack. Wow. Um, go wet zone. And so here we go. So I've got a black and two yellow by default. Oops. Black and two yellow. And before I do any of this, because I'm thinking about this now, I'm going to have Mediolius, who also gains six animus, play Blessing, which gains two characters within range for a token of their choice. Redraw, Empower, or Defense. Uh, Thera, the ranger, could really use a redraw. She's out. There you go. Thank you. And then uh, Ursus will take an Empower and spend it. Love it. So then I'll turn these... So I've, I'll turn two, these two yellows into a red each. And then I'll turn one white into a yellow. So I'll end up like that. Okay. I just need to deal at least... Well, we'll find out what happens here. Is there anything else I want to do before I do this? I think the answer to that is no. Okay. Five crit, four crit, two oh, 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 oh. Uh, That's pretty good. I'm going to start rolling. I'm going to roll a dice for the black one. Oh, okay. Because okay. I, I think there's not a lot of... Well, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's no blanks in the black deck, so it's very good right There's now. a red one if you decide you want it. Just, yeah, so let's just bag. roll this. It's a blank. Terrible. <laughs> uh, sure, why not? Wow. Yeah. Uh, okay, so... I'll draw that one, why not? Sure. All right. So <laughs> that is it's gonna be 5, lot. 10, 18. It's pretty good. Uh, 18 and that seems was... good. Also, oh, wait a minute. Sorry, for my black crit, I'm going to have played this card, which is when you critical during an attack that hits, draw two additional cards instead of one. So... Uh, does it... You can't, you can't overkill a die, right? I think you are already doing as much damage as you could land. Oh, am I? Because oh. six, 16 is like the most You're you right. can. Even okay. so, if you want to style on it, be my guest. Nah, nah, it's nah. not I'm actually. Not gonna, I'm not going to waste and it. And so all that damage is dealt to its... All, it's so actually it's, plus three, so it's It's flank, it's, it's head, and this maggot all take 21. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Well, I think the maggot's dead. I agree. Uh, okay, and then it's going to break both these dice. So we are about to resolve two Level stage two cards. two cards. Yeah. This is going to be just there fine. There you go. It's, no one's worried I'm about sure. this. I'm sure. I'm sure. So first, a dive bomb. The parasite emerges, so here. Hey, give us the flavor text. I'm sorry. You're yeah. right. The bloat fly alights. Moments later, a shadow passes over you. So first, the parasite emerges and then infests. Uh, okay, so we've got a maggot here. We're and not near it to damage. It's going to move to infest. It's going to move like this, right? This is very bad. Is it? Huh? Oh, good. Then place the seven hex template anywhere on the board <laughs> okay. so that it covers the most oath sworn and allies possible. Oh no! So it can hit That's this, right? Yeah, exactly. Although on the re on the back side, I think. Or th oh, this no, is good, good enough, yeah, right? right? It's right. a seven hex. Uh, this one's red. I assume the back would be red. I don't know. Okay, mm -hmm. so no, that's fine. Yeah, that's perfectly good. So we have to decide. I assume because the bear did this, it's going to include the bear, so it's going to be these three who take it. Uh, I mean, yeah, it just says that... Because it can't cover all four. Yeah, like, if, if the bear was a step further away, it would target us three. So I don't think it's, like, necessarily prioritizing the bear in any way. Okay. Um, that said... Well, in any event, it's going to do a tail yeah. attack and knock back two area of effect, targeting all enemies under the template. Then it's going to place the blow fly where the template is and remove the template. So we don't actually need the template. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so it's like... It's either... We just... I actually think we want to go down here because the knockback here would hit... Well, I guess this one. I guess either the priest or the bear are going to... I don't eaten. think we have a choice. I think if it's equal, then it's going to be north and west. So it's still going to be mm, Valid. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here, I guess I'll, I'll just throw these under these for sure. the moment. So we can see what is getting dive-bombed. All right. Well, everyone so, but the Harbinger is fucked. Yeah. So here we go. Um, all right, so it's going to deal an attack with its tail. So its, it's tail's gonna broken. Lose its black yeah. die. Yeah, we need to. We should clean up those cards, and then it's, it's going, going to get draw four, four red. red dice. 
And then we have to figure out what we want to do before it does anything. Yes. So four red dice is basically... So everyone but the Harbinger being attacked. Thera is vulnerable, though. Um, definitely going to play a defense card. I'm going to play a three defense on Thera, so that gets her up to five. I'm playing a three on Elspjorn, also up to five. On Mediolius... What I don't understand is, so like, I have a card that lets me ignore a might card. Mm -hmm. It says, after you or an adjacent friendly character has damage drawn against them, ignore one of that enemy's might cards against you or that character. So that means it's not going to ignore it for all of us. It sounds like you will choose which person gets to ignore that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, and so, and this one is... Oh, no. <laughs> I just noticed that this knockback... Assuming that the, it's, like, knocking back from the center of the template... Uh, the knockback would collide these two characters. That sucks. Yep. All right. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a Prayer of Protection to give plus three defense to my bear. So my wow. bear now has eight. Eight, okay. And then I'm going to play two defense for Mediolius himself, which will flow that. Um, so he's at five. Five and eight are my numbers. Pretty solid. Yeah. Okay. Time to draw? Yep. Here goes. Blank. Crit. Well, it's just, so they don't crit. So four, four, two. So ten. So my bear will take one. Yeah. And because that extra three reduced its damage... No, it didn't. Oh, yes, it did. Then Mediolius takes one for that. And then Mediolius also takes an additional two. Ow. So down to two. Thera's got a defense token that can make her defense six, so I'll just use it to Actually, only take yeah. one. Actually, Medioyas will spend a defense token to save one of those damage. And then well. the knockback two collides her into the Harbinger, <coughs> and I believe they both take a damage in that case, right? Yeah, and then Ow. my bear's going to knock back into this tree. Yep. Uh, Medioyas will go here. So that's just one damage. It's, on a, it's a knockback two, right? Yeah, so one, one, one more space. But and then is that one damage for my poor one bear? One to the bear, I believe so. so yeah. One to three. Ow. Okay. And then we have to... Does this die? I don't think so. I don't think because that we... Because how is this going to get placed? Because this is going to go in the middle of the template. Uh, so that would displace us, I think. Like yeah. That? Okay. Yeah. And where do you want to go to? Uh, I don't choose, right? It's west. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. And then we have to draw the second of these cards. <laughs> yep. Okay. That's bomb. another dive bomb? Well, at least we're a little more spread out this time. We are, yeah. So <laughs> it's going to choose... So, Parasite emerges, then infest, right? So right, so here's a... We've got a maggot where that one was, and, and then, then it's actually going to... We don't have to move it, because... Well, we can, but it's just going to... It's basically going to remove itself from right. the board. Yeah. And now it's going to okay. cover these two, because that's the only place it can hit two, right? Uh, yeah, it could do... Well, yeah, it could be here or here, or oh, these right. two, but it would be the west... Yeah, like, the, the center west. of this one is north and west, yep, so... Yep, yep. Uh, those are the discards from last time. Okay. Okay, so maybe the template's not so important. We know it's targeting these, I guess, and the center is like is there. Sure. For the knockback. Uh, brutal. Okay, so uh, this is ooh, going to hurt. All right. Going to want some more defense for sure. It's going to be the... Uh, Quick shot for her, I think. So two defense for Thera. So, so because just, I'm, just puts her at four. I'm gonna battle flow. Oh, it's not can you do that during the enemy's turn? Maybe. Use battle flow tokens? Maybe not. I won't do it anyway. Yeah. I promise, I basically can add two so I can make my defense five, or I can ignore a might card against drawn against me or against Thera. Mm. And I'm, I'm wondering what's gonna be more valuable. I think the might card's probably going to be... No, no, no. The two is going to be more valuable. Going up to five, right? Yeah, because if you don't have that, then you could easily take, like, three damage, right. which would be Death. catastrophic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm up to five, and we're drawing four more reds. Yep. <laughs> oh, God. You ready? <laughs> Never. Not going to be any more ready. A blank. A blank. Two. Wow. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, well, thanks pretty to the defense good. card, Thera takes nothing. And same with Mediolius. Uh, they still get knocked back, even if they're not hit, right? Yeah, By so damage, this so way. One, two. Luckily, okay. that doesn't hit 
Uh, yeah, no, no collisions that time. And all right, and this is still. I think it's like nothing has really changed its facing from that card, so it would be still facing that way, which is how it was facing from moving over here for the infest. That's my logic. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter that much when if it if it moved over anyway. here for the infest, yeah. it would have also displaced this and would have destroyed this tree. Oh, that's true. Um, and I think it would have been facing. I think this it, could, well, it would have been here for the infest, right? So it would have just displaced this. Sure. But yeah. All right. Okay, um, well, that's that's it. And what's it going to do next? Cause... Uh, well, next, probably we're breaking another die and doing stage three, right? Unless we want to let a round go it by, yeah. but let's just see another thing that it can do in stage two. Reemergence. The bodies of the slain begin to shudder as insectile legs claw their way to the surface. Apparently, there was room for one more in there. Parasite emerges, then infest. Place one flying maggot adjacent to the two furthest Oathsworn or ally from the blowfly. This is not bad at all, actually. It just, uh, it's, it does Parasite emerges then infest, and it spawns two more maggots. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, that doesn't sound that scary. But that said, we're probably going to break a die, and then it will be stage three. Yeah, the reality is I don't have a lot left I can do. I mean, I can walk up. And I have it. all of my animus left. Okay, so you're, you're in I can probably you. kill, uh, I can probably finish it off, and we just have to endure those two cards. Great. Which now, we, like, we're, we're spread out-ish. I mean, I can I guess, also, I mean, my bear has three animus, I can run away. I can be like, oh, let's go one, two, yeah, three, Yeah, we have seen that card that punishes us for being a far part, though, also. So who knows what. Yeah, that's right? true. <laughs> um, so I don't really know what to expect in stage three. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I, yeah, maybe this is a good place to do it. Well, yeah. you, why don't you... Why don't you well, so, here? so here, let me, because um, I did pick back up my... Prophetic Fulfillment, and it's just two Animus. So I am going to spend two, uh, let's see. Yeah, you don't have to be within range for, for this. Okay. Uh, spend two Animus to play Prophetic Fulfillment again with my Harbinger. Mm -hmm. This is what is going to heal Mediolius because you have less health than before. So okay. go so ahead and bump four. Yep. And right here I choose someone within range three to do the same. That mm -hmm. will have to be me or Thera, so I'll just go ahead and choose Thera. Okay, and that will also battle for these two cards, which is nice. <coughs> okay, I'm thinking, I guess I'm thinking I want to spread them out a hair to some, like maybe move the Harbinger here, and then Thera should be able to do lethal damage, I think. Okay. Or, man, remind me, if you attack something in this case, can you, can you take out both dice with one attack? Or can you only send that damage yeah, to one other die? Okay, so maybe I'm not doing them both at once. Um, Remind me, mm -hmm. with the final die, do we resolve its card, or is it just dead? Uh, I believe we resolve its card. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We have to survive that card. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. I remember... Um, well... I remember we had to look up once what happens if we take out multiple dice at once. Yeah. Like, And maybe the reason we had to look that up was because you don't actually resolve the final die. Time for another rule check? Sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, we've checked and it doesn't react to its final die. So we only have to endure one more thing, which I feel everyone's at at least three health. I feel like we should be able to. Yeah. Do you have at least like a card? I see you have a lot of cards on the table. Does your bear have a card in hand to defend with? It's three health is the scariest, I think, situation. It has a two to defend with. All right. That means it's probably not going to die. Right? Maybe. <laughs> Um, it also has a defense token, so okay, you can go up to five defense. Well, I will go ahead and have Thera ricochet. Oh, well, let's see. So we are going to have to do one reaction. So just, I just like don't want to be in in that hex, kind of in a yeah. like knockback or anything is likely to get me situation. Okay, so I'm gonna move two with the harbinger. Right. And then spend four for Thera to ricochet. That'll battle flow all these. Uh, this targets an additional enemy within range four of the first, so it's actually going to target the boss and this minion. Okay. And we add two to this attack for each target, and then I divide the damage between the targets. So we'll see what happens with what I draw. All right. Um, I, I, I don't have any empower or anything, so I think just give me... Oh, wait. I, I might as well use my fire water. This is the one that's, if I have not moved this turn, empower three on an attack. So, oh, amazing. 
Uh, why don't you give me uh, red, red, yellow? As a reminder, no blanks in the black deck. Oh. Although I don't, I mean, we can also look yeah. and see how many crits are in there. Three. Wait, there's three? There's only three crits in each deck. So So no crits. So no crits. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just get more reds. All right. So um, in power three, we'll give me red, red, yellow. I only have one redraw. Um, <coughs> yeah, I'll just, and I'm adding four to this already. I think I'm just going to stop there. Okay. Because if I get 10, I can break a die and take out the minion. Which like seems fine. If you draw blacks, well, whatever. Do, do your thing. Do your thing. I'm doing my thing. It's three, a blank, and a crit. Another crit. Amazing. I think we're going to be okay. I agree. Uh, so 10, 13, 17. 17. So I can take out the two die. I'm targeting its tail so I can hit either of these dice. I can take out the two and the minion. That seems good. Seems good to me. Yeah, so uh, let's do that. We've broken the core. And now we're drawing a stage three now card. Now we're drawing a stage three card. If you don't mind cleaning those up. I do not. Uh, here we go. Gusts. Diaphanous Ooh. wings beat with incredible speed and a spray of needle-like spines fill the air. Uh, Parasite emerges and then infest. Uh, so what's yeah, closest? so it's going to fly to like... One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's the northernmost one. Uh, uh, oh, I thought that one was closer. I see. Okay, so it's just going to go like this basically yep um okay then it's going to move eight to its target turns of the most number of enemies uh, possible are in its front arc and within range three and then it's going to do a cone range three with not so is the target going to gonna be mediolius it here? is okay, yeah so that's not too bad so it's going to turn and then it's going to go like this yep and then it's going to try and get as much as it can in its front arc um but it's only range three no one else is like one no one else is in there, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just hitting Mediolius. That's not too bad at all. No. Uh, it's also oh, it's the one that it's the one we haven't broken though. That's okay. So uh, the claw it's gonna get its full might here. All right. What would you like to do with Mediolius? So Mediolius actually does not have a defense card to play here. Really? Oh boy. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm glad that I healed him at least. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm way on the other side of the world from him. I don't yeah, think we should have I can do. foreseen that he was going to move over here and then many of us would have been targeted. We should have. But that's okay. That's life. All right, so what are we drawing? Um, black, black, four reds. Well, not ours. Oh. Yeah, his deck. Black Just draw all blanks. That'd be fine. I think we've already drawn all the blanks. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. One, two, three, four. All right, I'm Mediolus sure there's nothing I can do. just has three defense. Yeah. yeah, okay. All right. Uh-oh. We're at 10. Blank. 13. 13 is times three defense is just enough to, to take him out. Yep. Oh, no. Damn. That is very sad. All right, well, that's going to be our second KO of the campaign. Mediolius, and an injury. No! Hey, last time, wasn't it also Mediolius who got knocked out once before, and yeah. we drew that one injury that just is like a, a blank, a cool scar? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know what, maybe it'll happen again. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, I was kind of hoping that then I would have enough Animus to attack again and um, take off that last die, but it moved across the world. Uh, so, well, let me, if, yeah, if you want to clean up those cards, let me look at my cards, because I do have my Age Cloth Robe. Uh, if there are no adjacent Oathsworn, gain an Animus. So, she has four. Yeah, I don't think I can get there, though. Um, what about... If I only, I could have spent a Battlefield oh. token to pick this card up, and then I would have had at least one defense. And then I wouldn't have died. Mm. All right. That's uh, okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's fun to die sometimes. Sometimes. Um, it actually looks to me like my Harbinger can um, I wrap can, this up. I can also grant you one extra move if it's helpful. Um, I don't think I need it okay. because I just looked down and remembered what I said I needed to not forget at the start of this. Oh, yeah. Which is the Harbinger's once per encounter ability. You may move any distance for free without moving through the intervening hexes. There you go. Which means Talk. I can just go... Like, the, uh, I guess let's not be next to that, just in case it matters. I'll just be there. Mm -hmm. And three Animus is enough 
for my basic attack. All right. Actually, um, it's also enough for my backstab, which costs the same. And if attacking from the rear, this attack is empowered five. So what do you want? Uh, so let's see. Give me black, black, yellow. All I need to do is get four here. And I have all these redraws. I feel like this well, the should be adequate. Well, the blacks are so. Right, okay. The yellow is. We have three, six. That'll, That'll break the last die. Amazing. Damn, we were so close to living, all of us. That's it so was. Sad. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was good, though. Yeah, and you're, you're right. Um, that we could have at least thought about that the infest would move him near Mediolius and, yeah. and maybe tweaked something. I don't know exactly I mean, what all we would have done. Just me picking up this card would have solved all the problems. Mm. Oh, Battle Flow. And I have a Battle Flow yeah. token, so I could have just done it, yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, well. Yeah. 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 Mis misplays are interesting. Yeah, they are. Yep. Uh, uh, that was a good fight, though. And it was quick, too. It was. Yeah, yeah. on this recording. Oh, yeah, we're it? at a minute 15, or an hour 15, rather. Yeah. Uh, that's not so bad at all. Well, uh... In honor of Mediolius, you want to read us the epilogue? Oh, thank you. Yes, I will. Heavy boots crush the twitching maggots underfoot as you shear the wings from the beasts. Mm. You find some items amongst the carnage that may be of use. Tally level, oh. loot, and losses. Okay. We don't remember how to do that. Uh, totally. I'm definitely not picking up the rule book. Um, which one was it in? It should be in that one. It's not in the back of the... Oh, yeah. Here we go. Um, um, so... Tally level loot and losses. Level! We gain a level. So, we are, um... Level 6 now. We are level 6 now, right? We're not level 5 now, we're level 6 now? Yeah. Okay, we get a free company trait. All so right. now we can take the one that would do the heal <laughs> beginning. We can decide on it later, too, if we want. Uh, that's true, we can circle back to it. Um, I mean, we talked about this quite a bit last time. You want to do Tough as Nails? So, uh, Tough as Nails, I think, is good. I... Or one of the ones that give us redraws on those types of tests. You know what's interesting also? Uh, because of the order of this, I think... Like, wait, does it talk about uh, KO'd characters on here? Maybe you got, uh, let's see, losses for each unconscious. Yeah, so if we take True Grit that lets you draw two injury cards and pick one, like, the timing is we can take that now and then apply that for your current KO. Oh, interesting. If we want to. Yeah. That doesn't you don't feel strongly about it? I don't feel strongly about okay. it. I'm also thinking about, like, oh, maybe Mediolius is, is dead. And maybe he's going to be retired. Whoa. Not dead, but like maybe I'll bring in a new You're character. thinking about uh, just wondering, you know, when. Okay, yeah. yeah. Bring in the witch or sure. the ranger or the cur. Some, some other characters. Then, um, then just to tough as nails? Sure. All right. Oh, I don't have a pen. Okay, we'll write it later. But, uh, okay. Plus the injury system's fun. I don't want to get another blank. Uh, you that's true. See an injury. See, see an injury. Yeah. See an injury. Okay. Um, well, good. Well, let's see. I guess loot is next. So uh, I actually put the deck six on the table over there. Yeah, which you can reach for. I'm now realizing I didn't do the same with the unique deck for some reason, which mm -hmm. we're also going to need. Yeah. So let me if I pick up the card that I dropped while this was all in my lap. Let me go awkwardly grab that while you reveal three loot cards from that deck and tell us about them. Okay. Just three, huh? Just three. Alrighty. Yeah. So we have gotten, we received an old reinforced gambeson, which says it's a piece of armor that almost anyone can wear. And it says when you attack, if there are no oath sworn adjacent, gain two yellow. So that's pretty good. Um, we drew patched fleece garments. So it's a cloth armor that anyone can wear. And it says after damage is drawn against you, you can force the enemy to redraw one card of your choice. And finally, we received an Iron Top, which is a one-handed mace-type weapon that looks like a hammer. And actually... Sounds like it's good for the priests. Yeah. Well, we'll see. It, it rolls a red die, or it has a red die on it, but it says, when you critical during an attack that hits, add one damage and one knockback. That knockback would be cool. That is fun. So those are the yeah, three we okay. drew. And then we would normally get two of these five unique items, but we did solve the riddles fast enough to get a third unique item from the story. So we're going to get three. So they are the Plate of the Fallen. This is uh, plate armor for, with four defense that says when you lose your last health, you remain on the board with one health, max one in use per encounter. Wow. So it's basically a seventh health. Yeah. 
Um, I guess the, the nature this is actually of... so good for Mediolius because if he has only one health, he heals a health at the start of his turn. Does he really? Yeah. Oh, that's insane. So like that combo okay. is quite good. And, and the bear can also take it. Yeah, that's true. Which would be at least better defense. Yeah. yeah. But you're right. That does sound great for Mediolius. Yeah. Uh, okay. Number two. Foreman's Flask. A gear that says, uh, place two animus on this card. When this card returns to your hand, receive the two animus as well. Uh, so, so you have to put it in your three battle flow slot and then get it around to get two animus that's oh it's place a, a two animus token okay mm -hmm. so you get the token and then you can save that for a time when you want it uh that's that's fine yeah you just yeah. you just cycle that as fast as you can yeah, yeah yeah and bloat flies sting a one-handed dagger with just a yellow die and it says when you draw no blank cards after oh that's one-handed so you combine two weapons right yeah. that's why it's only a die when you draw no blank cards after redraws during an attack where you drew at least four might cards the target loses an additional health hmm cool yeah okay kind of hard to pull off a little bit yeah at least four might cards and no blanks after redraws but uh, yeah so it's good um it's good during attacks where you're like, I'm going to use my redraws to get as much damage as possible. Like right. To, to where you're, you kind of went in even wanting to re-roll, redraw that blank that didn't cause you to miss. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, and then an extra hit, like an extra hit point, that's a big payoff. Big, yeah, 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 totally. Especially if the damage is, I mean, I'm sure these numbers are going to go up and up and up. Uh, you would think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so we and got all that loot. Losses. Um, losses. So we each have to lose a gear item, right? We do. Uh, well, what, not a gear item. Because that's one of the types of items we have to lose. Sorry. An item that we brought. Yeah. I think the priest, Mediolius, is going to lose this bacon because it was never that useful. Mm. Maybe it would have been useful, actually, but whatever. I'm going to lose it. I think that these were all... Like, I made use of all of my... Um, of all of my items. But I think that the robe is the most... And we can get out our inventory and like make sure that we have you know another item that yeah she can wear oh and we got a cloth okay um after damage drawn against you force the enemy to redraw one card your choice oh yeah i would rather have this all day than the age cloth robe i was wearing so uh yeah she will lose her age cloth robe yeah i think i'm gonna lose this captain's plate off the bear and take the gambeson okay wow losing a previous uh unique item oh just, I mean, it doesn't matter much, right? It's not like they sell for more or anything because they're unique. So. Yeah, and this just says up to two of us one on the board, including yourself, may move one. It's not that strong of an effect, I felt like. What is, um, what's Mediolius's plate? His plate is the one that lets him add two yellow die to any attack or oh, that's pretty a good. basic check. Oh, and yeah. that is for the healing. It makes his healing way better. So, okay, so you would this want is really that, good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Although this is good for him too. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. I think the healing effect is really strong. So I'm kind of sticking with that. Solid. Okay. Um, I'm not huge on uh, the Harbinger's gear, these amber stones that say, if there's no enemies adjacent, battle flow one card once. It's pretty minor. Sure. I'm looking at what other, because we didn't get any other gear. No. Oh, well, the flask, I guess. Oh, yeah, the flask is good. Like, yeah. Yeah, actually, the Harbinger. It's, it's more likely be, to give more. That would be just fine for the Harbinger. Um, yeah, so why don't I tentatively, yeah, we don't have much other gear. We have a rope. Oh, and a tome. Um, but yeah, I'll go ahead and lose the Amber Stones and tentatively plan for the Harbinger to equip that flask. Sounds good to me. Okay. Uh, you've lost all your cards? I have. Okay. So that just leaves the KO to resolve, right? Let's, right? Is that, is there, am I missing anything else? We we've must. done level, we've done loot. And I see you got out these injury losses. cards here. I put them on the table in case we needed them. Why can I not find the page I was just reading? Okay. Uh, so, for each unconscious death by hardcore mode, <laughs> Oathsworn, mark one tick on the knockout track with free company sheet. Um, <laughs> let's see. The, um, so all unconscious Oathsworn gain an injury card. All Oathsworn lose one item equipped in the counter. We already did that. Okay. So. I have drawn you get? Gut Rot. Oof. That will teach you to keep your mouth closed in a fight. So I guess the, the, the vomit. <laughs> That's actually my pretty mouth. fitting. For, I mean, I yeah. guess most of these fights are disgusting. So <laughs> this says, this and all other injury cards in your hand must be played on your first turn of each round, even if it has no effect. Yep. But it doesn't seem to have an effect. I mean, I have to pay for it. Oh. Oh. It so doesn't. 
Com- oh, and then companions, it has companions. Companions do not suffer above, and they do this okay. kind of thing. So basically, I just have to pay. Yeah, so it's this. an it's a tax. It's an animus tax. You have to pay one to play it at every every energy. opportunity that you have. Yeah. Eh, that could have been worse. Not the end of the world. Could have been cooler yeah. though. Like, yeah. I'm not gonna do this. Yeah, no, that's, let's keep them, keep them surprises. Yep. Uh, I mean, you could have you could have um, drawn two and tried to pick a worse one if you had taken True Grit. That's okay. I'll <laughs> live about that. Uh, okay. Um, any more on the epilogue? Oh yes, there is. In fact, you gather what remains of the loggers and tell them to get back to work. Then you burn the bloatfly's body. As evening falls, you take the men back to the city. You try not to think that all this may be just so a noble could have a fine seat to sit on, but a contract is a contract, and these men are safe at least. With the wood secure in his warehouses, Lord Reiner fulfills his side of the contract, paying you well for the protection of his men. Gain 20 iron. Ooh, okay. All Oathsworn gain one iron each for each two civilians that survive the encounter, either on or off the board. We so that's sent two. five off the board. And then, does, did this one survive? Do we think the infested one survived? I mean, he survived the encounter. Sure. He died minutes later. So that's, but... that's eight. <laughs> so that's four extra. So four... Four each plus five each, basically. So wow. Nine, each. nine iron each. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't think I. I thought to get the injuries on the table, but not the money apparently. So That's okay. we'll we'll uh, we'll add nine to everyone. We also need to um, mark the KO and True Grit on no, not True Grit. Uh, tough as nails. Right. On our free company sheet. Once I go grab a pen or pencil. Great. Okay. Good game. Good game. That was fun. It was um, fun. I had felt like the last couple scenarios or the last couple encounters started feeling a little long and grindy. Yeah. So this one being like we're even including our epilogue, it was under ninety minutes. That felt great. I, I think that that that's a perfect was, was really nice. Yeah, yeah. 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 So very cool. Very cool. Good stuff. Uh, well, thank you for the game. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Uh, you can hear, I was about to say see more, hear more of Jordan on the Game Brain podcast. Uh, anywhere you get your podcasts, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, anything exciting you've been talking about there on there lately? The latest episode was about a gaming weekend I went on where I got COVID. But they still mm. talk about the games that I played even though I couldn't make the episode. Including <laughs> Plantagenet, um, Railways of the Lost Atlas, which was an 18xx I'm going to force you to learn. Oh, good. Um, and a variety of other great games. I'm not going to go through all of them. <laughs> Indonesia, you know. You so check out the Game Brain podcast to learn about the Jordan's weekend, but not from him. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and please make sure you like and subscribe to the video. And hey, if you're in the U.S., make sure you are ready to vote this November. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Specifically for Kamala Harris. We do endorse <laughs> Kamala Harris. Yeah, I mean, you do you. But our recommendation would definitely be Harris. Uh, and we'll be back with Story Chapter 6. Someday. Yeah. Hopefully sooner. Hopefully soon. Hopefully, <laughs> let's make a deal before the election. Okay. I think we can do that. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. we can do that. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, until then, be optimal.